Hi guys, this is day two in Badagri. So today we are going to the point of no return. We will return in Jesus' name. That's where the slaves were being taken to. And any slave that crosses this water and goes there never returns back to Nigeria. So let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Curator of the best curator of, of, of all time. Good morning. morning. Guys, so we are here by the Green Slave Route. This is the route of the journey to unknown destination. What does it mean, the route to unknown destination? When we get there, I will show everyone why we call it the point of no return and why we call it unknown destination. I won't tell you, but everyone will see it with their own eyes why we call it unknown destination. The way we move, from that jetty to this jetty, we cross on the water. Then, the same way, they move the slaves. But with, not with this kind of boat, but with paddle boats. And 3,000 men cannot stay in one boat. They will have many boats. So they will paddle the boats to this place. Then by dropping them, they will have to join everybody together. So they will, they will be on a single file. They call the movement single file. One line. Everybody will be on a single file. Straight down to the point of no return, where we are going to. And they have charcoals on their hands the neck and the leg so they are, the way we want to move now we we move freely because we don't have chains on our leg then they have to move like this so if we are spending 30 minutes or 10 minutes to get to that space let's imagine how many minutes they will spend in those days under hot sun and with heavy chains on their neck the hands and the leg so and they will still be flogging them most especially the person at the back so let's proceed so what is this island called this island is called the island. Okay. And this island used to be the route we think this lived through. Okay. This is where our forefathers worked for 400 years because this lift lasted for 400 years. Oh. And this island has been in existence before Badagri. Badagri was formed in the 14th century, 1425 to be precise, okay. uh, by a famous farmer on this island called Agbede. Agbede, Agbede means blacksmith. Agbede has a farm across the lagoon over there. So whenever people from this village are going to Agbede's farm, farm in a good language means grime. So whenever people are going to Agbede's farm, they will say, I'm going to Agbede grime. Agbede grime. From there, the Yoruba settlers, they can't pronounce grime because it's not their language. So they pronounce it as Agbadariki. Okay. So from Agbadariki, when the European came in, they corrupted it and changed it to Badagri. From Agbede grime to Agbadariki, to Badagri. So that was where the name Badagri came from. So right now, how long are we going to walk? Because me, I'm tired. I'm not a slave. <laughs> My leg gave me me. We don't hear waka. No, no. We've not gotten to uh, the spirit as a nation well. Okay. It's in the mid of the way. The mid? Of the way. Of... Okay, okay, okay. So that's the way that if they drink the water, they will lose their memory. Yes. According to the story, Nigeria has largest supply of slaves. 24 percent Nigeria and Angola, Ghana has 16 percent. So uh, it was told that it was because of this well mm. that makes Nigeria to have that kind of supply. And when we get to the well, I will tell you much about the well. Okay, okay. No, well, let's be going. Yeah, I'm okay. still going. And don't my leg get me, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but let's keep going. Yeah, anything for my love. But you are moving freely, but yes. then they have to move like this. They'll still be beating them on that hot sun. This is well. So why don't you want us to take bike? Why do you want us to feel the pains the slaves felt? So uh, we don't, I don't want us to use bike. Though if we use bike, it's easy. But if you don't use the bike, <laughs> you feel what our forefathers felt then. But if you use the bike, you won't really get what you came for. Okay. So let's walk on this route and let viewers at home see the kind of journey our forefathers and back on with chains on their neck, the legs. So you made mention about something about um, what the white, they took the chains from yeah. our legs and... Uh, I've observed that uh, the white men, 
though I'm not a racist, I love the white. Mm. Yes, I love them a lot. I love blacks also. I love everyone. God created everyone in his image. Mm. He didn't say black, he didn't say white, he didn't say Indian. Mm. So we are all one. But I've discovered that they've moved the chain from our feet into our brain. Can you explain that please? Uh, how did they remove the chain from the feet to the brain? With some of these things they gave to us. Let's see. They stole our education. They stole our freedom. They stole our business. They stole everything. All these things we are facing right now in Nigeria are those things they were facing then over there. We are blessed here in Africa. Everything we need, we have it here. But these people, some of these things we have, they don't have it. So they want to get it as much as they want. And because of our own greed, our brother's greed, they want to accept any offer given by those people. And that offer, uh, we are not gaining anything from that offer. It's just like, there's a saying, they said, uh, at the end of the tunnel, there will always be what? Light. At the end of the tunnel, there will always be light. But let's use uh, that tunnel as an example. Tunnel is like a pipe. You enter from this edge and come out from the other end. Let's not bend the pipe into a circle. That's how they are ruling us, those whites. Okay. How? Okay, let me say, if you bend a tunnel, you are moving around inside that tunnel. The tunnel is now a circle. Mm. You can't see the light. There's no way out. Mm. These people in us are on top of the tunnel. Mm. We are inside the tunnel. Mm. They keep telling us, keep going. You soon see the lights. Keep going. Mm. And we don't know we are still moving. Okay, if someone should fall in that tunnel and we are still moving around, we come back and see that same person. Ah, but we saw when this person fell down here. So where is the way? Where is the light? Where are we going to? But our people are afraid to tell the truth. Why are we afraid to tell the truth? Why are we afraid to tell the truth? Everyone knows the right thing to do. Why are we not doing it? That's the question. Why are we not doing the right thing? I'll throw that question to everyone at home to answer. Why are we not doing the right okay, thing? Okay, no problem. Drop yeah, your yeah. answer in the comment section. Oh, my don't tire our guard. Wait, where will they go? We never reach halfway. Eh? <laughs> oh, we'll go turn back or this research we don't do. No. Okay, guys, we are at the attenuation well. So what happened here? How did they discover this well? Who dug it? Was it a slave? Or was it, um, who did? Uh, so, you're welcome to the spirit attenuation well. The well water they give our forefathers then to make them to lose their memory and be less aggressive for three to four months. Why? This well was dug by the African chiefs. When the white men met with the African chiefs doing the business, that what can they do to avoid slave revolt on the ship? The African chiefs came together and they decided to dig this well. They dug this well, they added black magic in it. So by taking the slaves from that jetty, the way we move to this place, but not as easy as we move. When they get to this place, they will fetch the water and there is incantation they will recite before taking the water. I will send you that incantation. So they will recite it. After taking the water, this is the last thing our forefathers remember. And they will move them down to the point of no return where we are going to. That uh, black magic they added in this water will spend up to three to four months in our forefathers' brain. Because the ship will spend up to three to four months on the sea. It depends on the distance of the country they are taking them to. If the country is far, they will spend four months. If the country is close, they will spend three months. So for that three months, they won't remember anything. I just imagine that then, how would they feel when they get to unknown mass land? What do you remember? Uh, I drank water uh, and after that. What about you? I drank water uh, and you? Uh, I drank water and... Uh, they forgot everything. Now, you will have new memory. So they forget everything here. And male domestic slaves were mostly breeding in Havana, Cuba. Havana, Cuba. And male slaves were castrated that time. Were castrated? They castrated the male slave. 
because a white man cannot leave uh, a black slave at home with his wife or daughter so they have to castrate them the male slave became huge and tough so they use them as domestic slave uh, maybe they want to carry something they want to work on the farm maybe there's an issue between uh, the master and somebody they will send that slave to come fight that was how we use our forefathers. But out of the slaves that were castrated then, I was the only one that was not castrated. I have opportunity to meet with me. You were not there. Proceed? No, you were not there. <laughs> People were asking if I was there. I was there. I was giving birth to 18 months. He's just 27 years old, so he learned all of this. So let's go. We're going to the point of no return. Like, like I keep saying, we must return in Jesus' name. Yes, because we are not slaves. Yes, guys, so we are the place of no return. I don't know why if I don't feel good. It is well. So what do you have to say about this place? Uh, I welcome everyone to the point of no return. So this is where they take our forefathers and from there they take them on the ship. Now, the way we move from that uh, jetty to this place, the same way they move the slave, but not as easy as we move because they have charcoals on them. And when they get to this place, there will be many boats here also. The ship cannot come to the shore. The ship will park in the middle of the sea. That's not the middle of the sea, but where we see as the middle of the sea, that's where the ship will park. And they will bring many boats here. So they will arrange the slave in those boats, like 16, 17, 16, 15, 17. And the boats will take them to the ship. They arrange them in the boat. This is where our forefather said bye to this country. And why do we call this place the journey to unknown destination? If you look at this water from that end, round to this end here, mm. if you look at it round to this end, mm. I can't tell you if it is land that is after that water. You can't tell me if it is forest that is after that water. Nobody can tell us what is after that water. What you are just saying is water. So if I take you on this water, can you tell me where I'm taking you to? Only if I tell you that this is where I'm taking you to on this water. That's why we call it the journey to unknown destination. See, why, is that why the water is like this? Why is it like, yeah. like that place is high? That place is high and this place is low. That's how water looks like. So you're welcome to the point of no return. But we will return because we are not slaves. So you're welcome once again. So we are going to the slave market. Guys, we get to sleep at night. Let's proceed. Hi guys, so we are currently at the slave market. Slave market, right? Yes. So what were they doing here? The Vlikete slave market. So this what is, is it called? Vlikete slave market. So this is uh, where they sold uh, more than three thousand slaves every market days. Every market days. And we have uh, what we call don. Sorry, can you increase your voice a little? There's what we call dungeon here, okay. underground cell, okay. and you have privilege to see some of these things okay. here. So let's meet our curator here. Okay, this is our curator. Nobody wants to take us one. Curator, hi. Nice to meet you. So what are you going to be showing us today? I'm showing you uh, the Padagri slave market. No, no. no. Okay. So this, what, what? You... Okay. Uh, when he finished, he will tell us about these people. This is, uh, these are the people that witnessed the signing of the abolition of slave trade. That witnessed the signing. These are the missionaries, the missionary rules. This statue here tell us about the, the missionary rules. Okay, can you go that way? About the very well. abolition of slave trade. Okay, let him finish and come and tell us. you see some event that took place during the transatlantic slave trade. Okay. So we have uh, over here we have heard of a man spotted, a British uh, slave merchant post, spotted in slave ship in the slave era heading towards Badagri to carry slaves. So that's what's happening over there. And over there we have King Mew, okay. a crown of Badagri. Who was King Menu? Mew. A Mew. slave trader. Okay. The slave trader. So he was discussing with the Europeans. Okay. You can see the Europeans picture here, and these are own sheep. 
Okay, face it here instead. So, these are our own shoes. And this, uh, this discussion they have over here now, now led to what happened here. Okay. So, the king now gave them portion of land over there in Berefu. That is the point of no return. Okay. So, to build their camp. Okay. So, each European country with their camp. Okay. So, for example, you no, see... No, no, no. Okay, go ahead, man. No, no, no. Let's finish this plan. Okay, okay. So, for example, the uh, Europe, uh, English, England, all those in Spain mm. with their camp. So, each different country with their mm. camp. So, and over here we have Badagri Warlord, Posu. The Posu? Posu. Posu, okay. Badagri yeah. Warlord, yeah, Posu. Baba has told you about okay. Posu over there before. Okay. So, Posu, he led an attack on Port Novo around 1783, so to capture slaves. Okay. So, and these slave boat in Ketonu, Benin Republic. So, over here we have slave tunnel in Kanho quarters, Badagri. Okay. So, this is the slave tunnel. Okay. So, and over here we have the Badagri slave port, okay. which was established in 1510. So, okay. this is the spirit attenuation where. Okay. On, on the way to the point of no return. Yes, okay. So the water they gave them to lose their memory or mm. to make Moving them less work. aggressive. So, and this is King Adele of Lagos, who took asylum in Badagri okay. around 1821 to 1835, mm. after he was dethroned by his own brother. Okay. So, and this uh, papa, that is what was named after the king. That is Adele Topa, popularly called Badagri Waterfront now. Okay. So, and over here we have uh, Thomas Jefferson Bowen, the man who, who saw some slave being marching from the suburb of Muo Badagri. So he now later reports that, and this is the arrival of Hugh Clapperton and Richard Landa to Badagri. So they have been welcomed by Badagri chiefs. The, the man that was tried outside, okay. you clap Patton and Richard Lander, this is their arrival. Okay. So over here, this is the uh, Portuguese now reporting the arrival of uh, Richard Lander and Hugh clap Patton mm. to the then king. Okay. So, reporting them that they are British spy, this and that. Okay. So, what are the one down here? So, this is uh, Nigeria colonial town of Badagri, one of the African first slave ports okay. that, that was established in 1851. Okay. So, this over here, uh, we have mm. the main purpose Richard Landa visited mm. uh, Badagri is to propagate a legitimate trade okay. around it. After the signing of the abolition treaty in 1807 in Europe, okay. so that is the main purpose it was uh, in Badagri. Okay. <clears throat> so that's what they are discussing over there. And over here we have uh, a tank crier. You know, in olden days, is you hit metagon with to pass information okay. to the people. So that is what is happening here now. Okay. So in 18 it is. This guy here is hitting the gong, passing information to the people of Badagri that there is no more slavery in Badagri land. Okay. So that's what happened. Okay. So over here, we have some things that are used in capturing slaves. Okay. We have the sham beds, we have the chains, we have the African drums, and some pictures that talks about how they capture them. Over here, the sham beds were used by the slave hunters. Okay. So they use the sham bed to invoke some spirit on themselves because when they wear this sham bed, they believe they will have some, you know, spiritual power and they will drink some concussion with a special cup over there. So over there, we have the original slave chain and the liquor. The liquor is in uh, the gin that they use in exchange of human beings. So all these things over here are medium of exchange. Why we have the African tallest drum. So over here we have the tallest drum in Africa. So this drum was as in were usually beat by the stick workers. They call them Angere in Yoruba language. The stick workers and 
this one all the carvings on them are depicting the pre-colonial era down to the slave trade era so all the carvings you'll be seeing them these are some of our men you know these are people on the water sailing the boats these are your masquerade we have them we have the other and this is the transatlantic triangular slave trade so this all this carving is talking about the events from the pre-colonial era down to the transatlantic slave trade era you can see from the transatlantic slave trade era there's no more there's no much events that took place anymore so and over here we have how the slaves were being you know transferred from the interland down to the slave market from Oyo, Ogu, Ekiti, Ondo and the rest and over here we have the needless uh, victim of the needless um, during the transatlantic triangular slave trade these are some slaves and over here we have the Voduno that's the chief priest of the Vlekete shrine performing some rituals for the slaves before they went back on the journey through the Atlantic Ocean you know the, the, the shrine itself is a goddess of is a goddess of winds, ocean, and prosperity. So this is how they appease the goddess before they went back on the journey. And over here, this was how Samuel Ajayi Koda was captured in his own town called Oshogu. That's present or your state in 1821. So let's move down to slave, slave market around the world. So these are sugar cane plantation. How do we have Market. Market. So guys, here we come to the end of the gist, to the end of the video, to the end of the history. I know some of us don't really don't actually know all the sense, including me. Like I don't know all the sense. This video is Created by a fellow content creator, Mariam Oyakilome. I saw the video and I decided to share it with you guys. And the video credit goes to Mariam Oyakilome. So, but before we go, we would like to hear from your side. Like after watching this video, do you realize think that uh, Queen Elizabeth is part of those that enslave Africans? Do you realize think that Queen Elizabeth is part of those that caused Nigerians? The, uh, the problem we are facing now we would like to hear from your side and don't forget my name is Brad Tobias kindly subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't done so thank you and god bless you peace out